Now, the, it took me a little longer than I expected to come from Delhi to Gurgaon. Sorry, it's changed to Guru Gram, as we all know, uh, for reasons which I'm not entirely sure. But the point is that every time I come here, I find that things have changed. The road is blocked because there's work going on on the metro. The highway is, has got a diversion. There's some new construction coming. And we've lost all our landmarks. And I think that this is really the mark of the future. And that is the problem with change is the fact that we look for familiar landmarks. And if we don't find these landmarks, then we feel very insecure. And I think that therefore, I think the real barrier to change is uh, even though we know the change is a fact of life, we're not concerned about the fact that night changes to day because we're familiar with that. But when we come to some situation where things are entirely different, where we don't have any familiar landmarks, then we are gripped by fear that is there going to be a precipice at the end of this? Will this river come to a waterfall and crash me down into the waters below? So therefore, your fears come very much from the fact that you don't have any familiar landmarks. You very often don't have any uh, things to tell you where to go. So therefore, I think it's the fear and the fear of the future which is so much a terror for so many people. Now, in 1858, Charles Darwin wrote his uh, famous uh, uh, book on evolution. And of course, it created havoc in the old society. All the, uh, all the Bible thumpers were very horrified that the theory of creation in the uh, Old Testament was being challenged and that somebody had dared to suggest that man could have evolved out of a monkey. Now, and then there were famous cartoons that had come out on that point. But the fact of the matter is that uh, just look at the miracle of change. Why talk about the process of the human being having evolved after 3.7 million uh, years of uh, evolution when the change from a single cell organism to a fully formed baby takes place in a mother's womb in a period of nine months. In nine months, it changes from a sperm to a tadpole to a fish to a rat to a monkey until it's a fully formed little human baby. And this is, is a miracle that we all see, we all know, and none of us thinks about it. But these are the miracles of life. These are the miracles of change. Uh, but here again, we don't have any milestones that, 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 or any landmarks that happen. It's something that happens. It's natural. It happens. We're, we're, we're familiar with the fact the process of childbirth is not uh, uh, a, a mystery unless something seriously goes wrong. Now, the, one of the things that happens in the process of change is that there's a, I think, a, one of the unstated laws of, of, the, world, of the universe is the, the law of exponential, explosive expo, exponential change. Uh, you see the, uh, the mobiles that you have in your pockets. I hope they're all switched off. Uh, these uh, mobiles, see how they've changed in the last year. Forget the last 20 years or 30 years. Uh, Sudan Shu was talking about the fact of what a wonderful time he had during the 80s. But I can say that I think I had a better time in the 60s. But from the 60s, there's a huge change to the 80s. And from the 80s to the, the uh, 2000 and to the present day, there have been changes all the time. The new, the new tech. And this is, it's not just a change. It's an exponential explosion of change. There's an exponential. The, 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 the electronics have taken over everything. They have uh, today, a, a modern car uh, is no longer just uh, uh, accelerator and brakes. It's now got so many uh, uh, microchips in it. In fact, it's joked that a car has more chips in it than a packet of wafers. And there are microchips which control the steering, the, the engine management, the, uh, uh, the comfort, the air conditioning, Every, every detail of a car is now managed by 
by uh, 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 microchips, uh, not only the car itself, but even the process of manufacturing it. The manufacturing process, in, in a, almost instantaneously, the entire process of, uh, of uh, a manufacture has moved from uh, mechanical engineering to electronic engineering, which has, of course, a mechanical component. But the fact of the matter is that electronics decides it. In the old days, if my old ambassador broke down, I, I could probably fix it in half an hour. I would find out what's wrong with the fuel, I'd find out what's, if there was something wrong with electricals, and I'd be able to uh, get hold of a hammer, a screwdriver, and a spanner, and probably fix most of the things myself. Today, there's nothing I can do. The, the, the modern car is much, more, is much more reliable, much safer, more efficient, and then, then his predecessor, but I need to get a computer onto it, and therefore the, only the service station can come with a little computer and will probably fix the thing on the computer itself. These are things which were unthinkable in when you go back to the 60s or you go back to the 80s as Sudan was talking about. Now, so whether it's your cell phone, your cameras, or anything else, the, 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 the change is phenomenal. And it instantly makes things uh, uh, obsolete. Uh, we were so uh, proud of our Leica cameras, uh, all these wonderful th gadgets we had. And with the age of electronics, I mean, people were stunned and shocked when Kodak, almost overnight, decided to abandon the, the, the business of film uh, photography in which they were the world leaders. And overnight, it went out. Overnight, the digital camera took over from the from the uh, film camera. Uh, National Geographic for years would not accept digital photography. But now, what is photography? Photography is basically ways of capturing light. You capture light by chemicals, which you put on a film, or you capture light by various bits of electronic things that you, you can trap by other means. So therefore, the, the technology is changing, but it's changing faster. It's changing faster and faster all the time. And the problem today is that a lot of people don't even know how to handle it. Uh, look at the change in weapons. Uh, in the First World War, a, a, a fighter pilot in his biplane would be able to see the eyes of his enemy when he started firing his machine gun. Uh, uh, by the Second World War, the pilots never saw each other. And they, but they did see each other's planes of the, when they were shooting at it. In today's war, uh, the pilots don't even see each other. The battles, the planes are just platforms to take uh, missiles and other weapons into a, a hostile area and leave it to ground controllers who are like little boys on their little, uh, 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 what do you call it, war, war game toys who are watching exactly what's happened and killing people, uh, uh, killing weapons, killing, uh, uh, knocking out tanks and planes with, without any personal interest. There's no emotion. And in fact, that's one of the, the problems of uh, technology is that it takes us further and further away from our conscious. Puno had talked about the fact that emotion is a constant, but I think that changes too. And I think that the emotion that is involved is the fact that we very often uh, uh, need to uh, feel. Now, today, uh, technology is taken to such a ridiculous state that we see it every now and then, a, a boy and a girl having a date, and they, uh, are they seeing each other? Are they touching each other? Are they looking into each other's eyes? No, they're looking at the screens of their cell phones and communicating with cell phones. They're not communicating with each other in, in I mean, virtual reality is taken over from reality. So what is reality? There's another thesis here for you, or paradox for you. Yeah. So therefore, uh, a lot of people can't handle change. A lot of people say, it's too much, it's moving too fast, uh, it's too fuzzy, I get confused, uh, how do I handle it? And therefore, they tend to retreat into uh, meditation, philosophy, religion. Alternately, they decide to be fanatic. Say, all oh, this is rubbish, we need to go back to the uh, Bible thumping or the Quran thumping, uh, they go back to the truth of the prophets, they had all the truth, all the wisdom is in the past. There's no wisdom in the present. Now, we all know that that's not true either. 
So where are we? Uh, but we have a, a, a challenge with change. The uh, milestones are no longer in place. The, the, the familiar landmarks have, have uh, sometimes obscured. And yet the point is, there's a tidal wave of change coming, and it's coming higher. The waves are getting higher all the time. And what do we do? Uh, do, we, do we run, or do we allow ourselves to drown? But actually, we don't have a choice. We have to go to the furthest frontiers of opportunity, go to the change, regardless how old you are, regardless of how infirm you are, regardless how cold and hungry you are, uh, you have to go to the frontiers of change, or, or alternately, you have no alternative. You'll be dragged by change. You'll be dragged bleeding and bruised uh, by, by the sheer force of velocity of change. And therefore, the sooner you decide to let go of all the anchors you held, held on to in the past, and the sooner you uh, uh, go take, uh, take the wave as it comes, treat it as a surfboard to have fun and sail into the future.